Hi students, welcome to exercise 39, composite functions. Okay, so very similar to what we did in exercise 37, 38, except here it's a composition of functions. And what that means is, for example, in this case, here you have g of 2 inside of f of x. Okay, so first, when you, anytime you deal with these, you're going to work your way inside out. So, for example, we're going to first find g of 2. So you're going to take this function g, and you'll find g of 2. So g of 2 is equal to 2 times 2 minus 3. And so this is just 4 minus 3, which is 1. So g of 2 is equal to 1. Okay, so again, what that means is when x equals to 2, the function g has a y value of 1. Okay, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to replace this g of 2 with our value of 1, because they're equivalent, right? g of 2 is equal to 1. So I can replace this with 1. So now what I have is f of 1. And I'm replacing x equals 1 into my other function, f. And so noticing that, that's simply 2. And therefore, if I take all that together, f of g of 2 is equal to 2. Because when you plug in 2 into g, you get 1. And when you plug in 1 into f, you get 2. So f of g of 2 is equal to 2. All right, write an equation for g of g of x. Well, that's just pl plugging in g of x into our function g, right? So g of x, I'll just write it down here, g of x is equal to 2x minus 3, right? And that's what I'm replacing for x here. So what I really have got is I've got g of 2x minus 3 because g of x is equal to 2x minus 3. And I'm plugging that in to my original function g of x. So you have 2 times 2x minus 3 minus 3. So I've replaced x, right? I've replaced x with 2x minus 3. And all you've got to do now is expand that. So that's 4x minus 6 minus 3. So g of g of x is equal to 4x minus 9. Because again, that's minus 6 minus 3 is minus 9. All right, write an equation for g of f of x. So this is another notation to represent the exact same thing as saying g of f of x. So notice that this is an open dot here. When you're doing multiplication or product of functions, this was like just a multiplication symbol. This is an open dot to represent g of f of x. Okay, so this notation is the exact same as this one. Okay, so again, same idea as this, except here I'm plugging in f of x inside of g. Okay, and just to look at our functions again, so I'm plugging in function f of x inside of my function g. So what does that look like? Okay, so f of, I'm sorry, g of f of x is equals to 2 times x squared plus 1 minus 3. So again, g of, f, g of x is 2x minus 3, and f of x inside is just x squared plus 1. So I'm plugging in x squared plus 1 inside of g of x. And then all you got to do is simplify. So now you have 2x squared plus 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. Okay? Now I want to evaluate g of f of negative 1. So I could do this in two different ways. And we're going to do this in two different ways. Okay, so I could do the normal thing where I, I first find... Okay, so again, what we're looking for is this, right? So what I can find is I can plug in negative 1 into my function f. So the first thing I would do is plug in negative 1 into f, which you would get uh, 2, right? Because negative 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2. And then I take that value of 2 and plug it into g. So then you'd have g of 2 is equal to 2 times 2 minus 3, and which g of 2 would give you uh, 1. So therefore, this combined g of f of negative 1 would equal to 1. Okay, because that's the whole process. But notice I found a function for that. I've already found the g of f of x is this. So all I'd have to do is plug in negative 1 into there. So, so what I could have done is I would have said, okay, well, g of f of negative 1 is equal to 2 times negative 1 squared minus 1, which equals to 2 times 1, which equals to 1. So obviously, this would be the same as that. 
and a little bit quicker since I've already found the function. All right, in this situation, we're given a table of values. Okay, so when x equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the values of y for f are here, the values of y for g are here. So g of 1 would be equal to 6, f of 3 is equal to 4, g of 4 is equal to 1, so on. Okay, so basically we just have to follow our table of values to evaluate these. So g of 2, right, g of 2, so when x equals 2, g is equal to 3, so that we could replace this with 3. And now we find f of 3, which is equal to 4, so that is equal to 4. Okay, and b, f of 0. Well, notice that f of 0 is not defined. I do not know the value when x equals 0 because I haven't defined it. So this would be undefined since, since I do not have a value for when x equals 0 of f or g for that matter. Okay, so in this next one here, this is the, new, the slightly different notation. Just to continue to get used to it, I'm going to rewrite it using the notation that we might be a little bit more comfortable with. So this is g of f of 3, okay? So we first start f of 3, which is 4. So this is 4, and now g of 4, which is 1, okay? And rewrite it again. I'll probably start writing this, like, stop writing it like this eventually. Okay, so f of 1, so f of 1 is 3. And so now we go with f again, f of 3 is 4, okay? so. Nothing too complicated there. All right, so given that f and g, so f of equal to x minus 3, g is x plus 3 over 2, determine f of g of x and g of f of x. Okay, well, let's start with the first one, f of g of x. So f of g of x is equal to, so again, I'm plugging in g into my function f. So it's 2 times x plus 3 over 2 minus 3. So again, I've just replaced this x here, right? The normal x, f of x here, I replaced it with the whole function of g. Okay, so now notice that the 2's cancel out. So I have x plus 3 minus 3. Well, plus 3 minus 3 is 0, so therefore, it just equals to x. All right, so let's do g of f of x. Okay, so now I'm plugging in our function f, so 2x minus 3. I'm plugging in this into g. So what you have, you have 2x minus 3 plus 3 over 2. Okay, so do this in two steps. So now this minus 3 plus 3 cancel out. You have 2x over 2, which gives us x. Okay, well, this is not by accident that these, these are both equal to x. Okay, so this is a special case. So whenever this is true, and notice I'd say or, so either one is, can be true, it'll automatically be true for the other. This means that f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. So these are inverse functions. And just to prove that, I'm just going to show that they are inverses of each other. So let's take f. So this is 2x minus 3. Let's flip x and y. Okay. And I'll keep going over here. And then I'll solve for x, or solve for y, I mean. So bring the 3 over. And you divide by 2. There you go. So that is an inverse of that. And that's what we have here. So anytime that you want to check whether functions are inverses of each other, so you can actually find the inverse and prove that it's equal to the other one, or you could do this notation, do f of g of x, and anytime that's equal to x, this means that they are inverses of each other. All right, so this example is using graphs, so very similar to the table of values uh, example that we had earlier. So here we have g of 2. So when x equals to 2, the value of g is negative 1. So you, would, you could rewrite this as f of negative 1. So now when you find negative 1 for x, you get 4. So this whole thing would be equal to 4. Simple enough, right? f of 4, f of 4 is 2. So now you have g of 2, and we already found g of 2, it's equal to negative 1. So this would be equal to negative 1. All right, so now a little bit more difficult question. Determine the value of x if f of g of x equals to 3. So this is kind of working backwards here. Okay, well, the first thing we got to do, well, we know that the final function is when f is equal to 3. Because if you, whatever you plug in g there, f of something gives you 3. So if we look at our function f, 
Okay, we look at that there's a couple spots where it's equal to three. We have when this is equal to zero and when it's equal to negative four. Both of those will give us three, right? Okay, so there are two options here. We know that f of zero is equal to three and we know that f of negative four is equal to three. Those are the two options. So now we're saying that g of x has to be equal to zero or g of x has to be equal to negative four. So those are our two options now. So now we're saying g of x has to be equal to zero or g of x has to be equal to negative four. Well, when does that happen? Well, as you can tell, g of x will never equal to negative four. It never goes down here. So there is no solution, whoops, there is no solution to that part of the, that branch. So there's no value of x for that, that branch. And now over here, when is g equal to zero? Well, there's a couple options here. There's negative one and there's negative two. Both of those will give you um, a value of zero. So here, there would be two options. So it would be x equals to negative one and x equals to, sorry, I think it's supposed to be positive one, right? So x equals to positive one and x equals to negative two. Go back. Yep, that's true. So again, you can check this by plugging them in. So if you find g of 1, g of 1 gives you 0. And then when you find f of 0, so f of 0 gives you 3. So that would have been a good solution. Okay, so it's like working backwards. Again, um, try one out. It's actually not as difficult as it might have sounded. All right, the last thing we got to deal with is what happens to the domain. Uh, of a function when you do a composite function. So let's first find g of f of x and identify the domain. So g of f of x we've done a few times, so I'm just plugging in f right into my function g. So g of um, square root of x plus 3, right, that's another way we could write it. And this would be equal to um, square root of x plus 3 squared minus 4, which is going to be equal to x plus 3 minus 4, which is simply oops, x minus 1, okay, because the square cancelled out the square root. Now with the domain, notice that this function here, this is a line, okay, so which means, hey, no problem, domain is all the real numbers. But you have to consider the domain of the interior function f of x. Okay, so f of x had a domain because you cannot take the square root of a negative, right? So the domain of that function would have been x has to be larger or equal to negative 3. This domain would have been anything since it's a quadratic function. Okay, so our new function is g, g of f of x equals to x minus 1, which is just a line, but x has to be larger or equal to negative 3. Therefore, for the domain, we would say x would have to be the, uh, larger or equal to negative 3. If I was to sketch the graph of this function, okay, it would just be the line x minus 1, right? So you'd have x minus 1, which would look something like this, except that you would stop it at negative 3. Okay, so let's say this is negative 3 here. You would have a point, and you could say, only this part is the actual g of f of x, since the domain is x is larger or equal to negative 3. Okay, determine g of f of x and identify the domain. Same idea. Okay, so now, but I'm plugging in g into my f function. Okay, so now we're doing f of x squared minus 4, which is equal to the square root of x squared minus 4 plus 3. Right, because I've plugged in this for x. Okay, so now you have to take the square root of x squared minus 1, because minus 4 minus 1. Okay, so this is a little bit tricky. So we, uh, what we're doing here is we have to make sure that this is positive, right? And if x is larger than 1, this will be positive. If x is smaller than negative 1, this will be positive. Because think about it, if x is anything between 0 and 1, it will not uh, make this positive here. So in this case... Um, we first will consider the domain of this, which is anything. And now we look at the final function. So x has to be uh, smaller or equal to negative 1, which would make this 0, right? 
Uh, sorry, don't want to do that. And also has to be greater or equal to 1. So x is everything except these two possible values. Okay, and note that we consider the domain of the interfering function as well uh, as the domain of the composite function. So you got to look at the domain of the final function, but you also have to look at the domain of the interior function. All right, guys, hope uh, the lesson made sense, and hope you had a great break. I'll see you on January 4th.